Good morning, everyone. Are you excited? You're here today. Parang konti lang. Parang di ko mahin. Are you excited that you're here on Palm Sunday? Yes, it's Palm Sunday. Everybody say praise the Lord. Kulang palasan. Everybody say praise the Lord. Why? Because we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus. Amen. Wala man tayong special program. Well, worship is special, no? Uh, wala man tayong focus on Palm Sunday, but we remember that today, we remember Jesus victoriously entered Jerusalem as He promised. Amen? Because He's a, he's a promise-giving Savior. Amen? When He promises, He keeps it. Ginagawa niya. At ginawa niya nga, di ba? Pangako ng Old Testament that the Messiah would come riding on the donkey. And He did. Kasi intentional si Jesus. Eh? Amen? Naniwala ba kayo dun? Intentional si Jesus. Amen? Magandang umaga sa inyo. Salamat sa Panginoon sa an opportunity again to share the Word of God. Uh, Pastor Jonathan and I, our youth pastor from Life Source, we've been partnering with you uh, through Pastor James with our youth leaders. Mula noong September, we've been doing Leaders for Life. Ten sessions, once a month. Uh, once a month na isang session, dalawang session. And so by May, matatapos kami. We thank God for the opportunity to share uh, leadership through the servant leadership model of Jesus. We want to be leaders, but we want to be servant leaders just like Jesus. Amen? At, at ng leadership, sinasabi din ito ng mga hindi, hindi Christian, that everybody can be a leader. We are all, actually all influencers. Now we are influencers. Especially we are Christians. And so we want to train your young people to be leaders for life. Even young people. Yung unang lesson ang sabi, youth can. Young people can be influencers. Young people can be leaders. So that's why we, we do the training for our uh, leaders dito sa UBC. And by May, we hopefully finish this. And that they will pass it on to other young leaders in the church. Because we know that God has potential for young people. So that's one partnership that I am grateful for. Thank the Lord, this church has so much potential. I know there are spaces. Look around, look around, look around. There's the spaces, right? There's spaces pa? That's a good problem actually. You know why? Because that can be filled by God with people. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm asking you, do you believe that? Pag may space, may taong nilalagay yung Panginoon. Pag wala nang space, ibig sabihin, mas malaking simbahan kailangan natin. <laughs> no? Actually, lumipat na nga kayo, di ba? Uh, noon, sa dating simbahan, tapos ngayon, uh, marami pang space. Meron pa hang ganun. Pangarapin natin, pag-pray natin, Lord, you will bring people to UBC because UBC is your church. Amen? Ako, I believe that. Ako, kaniramdawin ko kanina every time I go here, na feel ko, parang, parang may, ano, parang dam na malapit ng mag, ano, malapit ng mag-break in the spirit. No, you may be silent, you may be a little bit, a lot, a lot of people may be shy. I don't know, it's, it's personality or it's culture, I don't know. For I feel in my spirit that God has something special for this church. In your 65th year, as you go to 70, there is something that God has promised for this church. Hindi lang nung araw na maraming nangyayari, kasi maraming mga, ang pastor natin, Americano, no? Sometimes, ganun yung feeling ganda nangyari sa church pag pastor namin Amerikano hindi walang kinalaman yun sa nationality may kinalaman yan sa ginagawa ng Diyos sa UBC do you believe that God is still in this church? do you believe that God is in this church? Amen do you believe that God is doing something? Amen that's why your theme is very important for the quarter because we do not want to be passive we want to be active we want to be empowered witnesses Empowered witnessing is not just for Pastor James or Pastor Amy who is in missions, no? Not just for Brother Ricky, Brother Henry, the leaders, no? Maybe Ate, Ate, ano, Ate, Ate Eliza, no? Ate Hannah. Pero hindi lang sa leaders. Sa inyo din. Say to your neighbor para sa iyo din. You are empowered witness. Tell your neighbor you are an empowered witness. <laughs> para okay, sige, sige. Inisip ko na lang na medyo shy kayo, no? So, para sa ating lahat yan, because we are Christians. If you're a follower of Jesus, that phrase is for you, empowered witness. And we want to learn. Napansin ko yung mga 
themes niyo for the last few weeks. Ang gaganda, all about witnessing. The songs were challenging for us. Uh, set my fire, set, set a fire in my soul. That I want to lose control, no? lose control in a good way. Lord, I want to be empowered by you because I want you to use me for your glory. And so, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon for that partnership. This morning, let's go to the Word of God. Katulad ng mga nakaraang linggo, I want to speak on intentional witnessing. But this time, sige po, ilabas natin yung PowerPoint. Intentional witnessing motives and models from the Word of God. I'm not, I'm not gonna speak from one passage, but we'll look into several scriptures today. Let's pray. Let's all uh, ask the Lord's help. Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence in this church. We thank you for the victories, Lord God. Help us, Lord, not to look only at the problems, but most especially to look into the victories that you have given us, the wins, the blessings. May we learn to thank you, Lord, in what you're doing in this church. May we be glad because you are in this church. Thank you, Lord, for the theme of intentional witnessing for the last several weeks. We pray right now that you speak to us, Lord God. Help us to understand the reason why we need to go out and share, go out of our comfort zones. Help us to learn the models, Father God, the examples from scriptures. Dear Jesus, speak to us. We do this because we love you, not because of anything else. Because we love you and you're the first one who loved us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Teach us, dear Holy Spirit. You are our teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. By the way, those who are online, uh, we welcome you to study the Word with us. Hindi uh, namin alam kung bakit wala kayo on-site, but we thank you for joining us online. Maganda po yan. We understand that in this season, we also have uh, online service or uh, online means so that other people can really uh, hear the Word of God kahit kayo ay nasa bahay. Let me ask you this this morning. Have you experienced being a witness of a significant event? Naalala ko dati. Nandun ako sa Filgawa nung dumating si President Bush. Kahit na sideline lang ako, grabe yun, no, no? Hindi ko maintindihan yun. Pag yung presidente natin dumadaan, one way siguro yung traffic o merong wang-wang, pero pag presidente ng Pilipinas, bawal ang lahat ng uri ng traffic, ay, presidente ng Amerika, bawal ang lahat ng uri ng sasakyan sa Filcoa that time. I was on the sidelines kasi andas ako sa UP, tapos uh, uh, nadun ako sa sidelines sa may dating Jollibee and McDonald's, wala na yun ngayon. Dumaan yung convoy ni President Bush. Sabi ko, ganun pala yun? Pag presidente ng Amerika, walang sasakyan sa buong karsada. <laughs> Hindi lang one way. Ano, kakaiba. Ano, na-witness kayo, na-witness kayo. Uh, anybody else? You witness something remarkable. Probably the wedding of your daughter. Di ba? O yun sa mga bagong pamilya, the, the dedication of your child. Or yung mismong unang anak mo. Na-witness mo. No? These are significant events in our lives. Happy events. Baka meron pa kayo naisip na iba pa. No? Na nakita nyo, na-witness nyo once in your lifetime. You know, for Muslims, going to Mecca once in their lifetime is very, very significant for them. Muslims ito, ah. Yung makapunta ng Mecca, makita nila yung kanilang holiest site. Yung iba sa atin, probably nakapunta na ng Jerusalem, no? Uh, something we dream of. Kung luloobin ng Panginoon, okay. Pag hindi, okay lang din. No? Siguro some of you went to Jerusalem. That's something remarkable. Have you experienced or witnessed something very awesome and remarkable? Think about it. How did you feel as a witness? Sana hindi tayo mga witness ng crime or tragedy. What some of us did. No? Something na hindi natin makalimutan. Something na kahit na negative, minsan kanikwento natin kasi hindi natin makalimutan. Minsan traumatic pa nga, No? We are witnesses, eyewitnesses of things that are either good or something tragic, no? I want to read from Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. It's on the screen. This is my first scripture, and we want to take off from that, you know, because we want to read about Jesus. Mark 1, 14, 15, after Jesus was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. 
the kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Repent and believe the good news. Ang sabi ni Mark as the gospel writer. No, This was the occasion when Jesus and uh, John was put in prison and Jesus began his ministry. You know, Jesus was the foremost proclaimer of the kingdom of God and the good news of the kingdom of God. Yes, there were prophecies in the Old Testament. Pero si Jesus talaga, no? pagkatapos niya mabtay sa water, and then John was put in prison, he began his ministry by proclaiming about God and His kingdom. Nagsimula siya mag-preach. Si John actually nagpipreach din repentance, pero malinaw sa kanya kung sino siya. Forerunner lang ako. No? Someone will come na hindi nga ako worthy mag ng kanyang shoes. And Jesus came and said, Repent! So that's the first word, ano? Repent! Magsisi! Talikuro ng kasalanan. For the kingdom of God is near. It's all about God's kingdom. It's all about God's rule in people's hearts. Sino magsasabi ng Amen? God is ruling in our hearts. Would you say Amen with me? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We want to know that. We want to be sure, no? Repent. That's the first phase. That's the first word. Turn away from sin. And turn to God. No? For the kingdom of God is at hand. Then after Jesus' ministry, and then later on He was crucified, His death, resurrection, and ascension to heaven, His disciples became His witnesses. Siya muna, nangara, nag-ministry, three and a half years. And today, starting today, we are celebrating Holy Week. By the way, sa mga Pilipino, minsan nagiging tradisyon na lang. Ang aking request, sana hindi tradisyon sa atin. Amen? Amen? Kasi nga, actually, Ramadan din ngayon. No? Ramadan din ngayon sa mga Muslim. That's very important to them. But sometimes, we Filipinos, because of centuries of tradition and the big church, the old church that we belong to, ganun na lang. And I want to speak to you today. Salamat sa Lord, mayroon kayong opportunity, no? This Good Friday. Hallelujah! Okay lang naman magbakasyon. <laughs> Walang problema, kami din magbabakasyon. Pero first time ito in many years, no? We're gonna be away on a Holy Week. Pabalik din kami ng Friday. <laughs> First time, matagal na. Kasi lagi, nung dati kong church sa Montalban, pag Holy Week, mula Holy Wednesday, hanggang linggo, may activity. <laughs> so ngayon, first time. Now, we're gonna be away as a family. Maybe reflect on the goodness of God, some r r but we're gonna be back on Friday. Okay lang, magbakasyon kayo. Pero what's important is, kamusta ang pag-aalaala mo ng kamatayan, paghihirap, at pagkabuhay na mag-uli ni Kristo? Kamusta? Sa bahay, probably watching passion videos about Jesus, reading the Bible, spending more time in devotional kasi walang pasok, and then going to church on a Friday. Hallelujah! These are great times for you to tell the people around there in your community, come, we want to tell you, there's a special day. On Friday, whole day pa nga tayo, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There's a special event on Friday. We're gonna hear about the true what does the Bible say about Jesus' death and resurrection? Come to church. Come to church. Gusto ko nakantayin yung come to the altar. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, come to church. Your neighbor, your relative on Friday and on Sunday. You know? These are times that we bring people to church. You know? Later on, his disciples became witnesses of the fact that Jesus, the Messiah, rose again from the grave as he promised. They were witnesses of this Jesus who rose from the dead, as He promised. There were eyewitnesses. I hope na niniwana pa rin tayo dito. Sabi ng Acts chapter 2, verse 31 to 32, Peter speaking at Pentecost, verse 31, Seeing what was to come, He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that He was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did He see His body see decay. Verse 32, look at it. God has raised this Jesus to life, and Peter was saying, we are all witnesses of this. They were witnesses of Jesus. Anong ibig sabihin ng witness? The Greek word for witness in Acts 2.32 is from the Greek word martyres. Sa Tagalog, mga, oh, parang Tagalog din, oh, martyres. From the word martus, which means eyewitness. Or literally, an eyewitness or ear witness. Nakita at nadinig. Nakita nila at nadinig nila si Jesus. 
nakasama, kumain pareho, nagminister, nagpadilat ng mata ng bulag, nakita nilang naggal, nagpagaling ng may sakit, nakita nila lahat for three and a half years, then he saw how he gave his life on the cross. Nung una, hindi nila maintindihan. Bakit yung Messiah na supposed to be the King of Israel, bakit mamamatay? They were bewildered. Then when he rose again from the grave, hey, this is the Messiah, the promised one in the Old Testament. Totoo nga. Because he conquered death. He resurrected from the grave. No prophet, no teacher of religion is like unto Jesus. Would you agree? Dito lang. <laughs> Parang kalahati lang. Meron bang naniniwana rito na si Jesus ay walang katulad? Because of his resurrection from the dead. Amen. We should be convinced. If you're not convinced, I pray that you pray to God, study the Bible, talk to your pastors about it, because it is a fact that Jesus is not in the grave. Hallelujah! That's why we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Merong mga theologian na nagsasaba, which I believe that that is the central message of Christianity. It is what makes Christianity different from all other faiths. Jesus rose from the grave. He is alive forevermore and He lives forevermore. One day, He will be coming back again for His people. Amen. He will be. So there were eyewitnesses. Acts 4, 19-20, But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes to listen to you, the Pharisees, or to Him. You be the judges. Verse 20, look at this. As for us, we cannot, help, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Si Peter at si John, talking about the man uh, healed at the temple gate. Sinasabi nila, itong Jesus na pinapangaral namin, hindi namin matiis na hindi magsalita eh. We cannot help speak about Him because we have seen and heard. We have seen and heard. They were eyewitnesses actually by the beginning of the first century, well, Stephen started, first century, second century, third century, to be a follower of Jesus is to be a martus. Yung word na martus, synonymous dun sa mamatay ka para kay Kristo. There was a time even na pag hindi ka na martyr at namatay ka, <laughs> eh parang hindi ka, hindi ka glorified, no? katulad nung namatay ng martyr. Parang ganun na yung relationship ng martyr and dying for Jesus, following Jesus. It's a badge of honor to die for Jesus because they were martyrs. They were eyewitnesses. Let me say this. I want to say this to you. Next page, please. We're going to look at the New Testament because the New Testament provides us with more than sufficient motivation and reasons and models or examples for us to be effective witnesses today. Pastor James talked about salt and light. Praise God. You're a salt. You're a light kung saan ka man nandoon. May liwanag na nasa Panginoon, the light of the world, na nagliliwanag dahil meron kang relasyon sa Kanya. We want to talk about reasons, motives, and models. Now, let's talk about motives. Motives. Next page, please. The reasons for witnessing. Why do we witness? Why should you? Some of you are new, wit- new witnesses, new followers of Jesus. Some are born in this church. <laughs> Yung iba tumanda na sa church na to. Yung iba tumanda sa paging kristyano, katulad namin, um, I accepted the Lord, nasa, bagit ko na yata to last time, I accepted the Lord when I was eight years old. I grew up in an assembly of God church. Some of you din. But sometimes we forget the reason why we are followers of Jesus. Nasanay na lang tayo, parang relihiyon ng pagiging katoliko, katulad ng ibang relihiyon natin dati. Nasanay na. Now, tignan natin yung mga reasons. I'm gonna be quick with this. Number one, the reality of eternal judgment. Revelation chapter 21, let me read. First of all, the reality of eternal judgment. No, But the cowards and believers, the corrupt, the murderers, immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshippers, and all liars, their fate is in the fire lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. I don't want to scare people, but that is the truth of the gospel. The reality of eternal judgment. Sabi ng Bible sa Hebrews, it's appointed unto man to die once after that to face judgment. Buti na lang ang judgment ng talagang judgment ay para lamang sa mga hindi follower ni Jesus. And then for people to face judgment, for Christians 
there will be rewards. No? So the reality of hell, the reality of eternal punishment. Second, we now read Revelation 21 verse 4 in the same chapter. This time about eternal rest. This time about heaven. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Would you say hallelujah? Amen. There is a promise of eternal rest. No, my, my asawa ng pinsan ko na matay a week ago in Valenzuela. She's 78 years old. You know, she's from Jesus Cares Assembly of God Church. She knows the Lord. She died in her death. Na kuminsan, pag namin namamatay, naala natin, lahat tayo mamamatay din. Where are you going? Are you prepared? God has promised an eternal rest, the reality of eternal rest for those who follow Jesus. Walang, kina, walang kinalaman sa ethnicity, sa age, sa religiosity, sa skin color, sa yaman, sa education, wala yun. It's all about, are you a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you, have you been bought by the blood of the Lamb? Katulad ng kinanta natin kanina. So the first one is reality of heaven and heaven and hell, No? This is a good, this is a good ver- verse, which is we look forward to. Revelation 7, 9. After this, I looked. This is John speaking. And there before me was a great multitude that no one can count. From, look at this. Huh? From every tribe, nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. This is the vision Hallelujah! Every nation, look, look, every nation, every tribe, every language, every people standing before the throne and the Lamb. This is the dream. No? That's why we do missions. Merong isang quotation, John Piper, missions, which is actually cross-cultural witnessing. Witnessing din yan, pero cross-cultural. Missions exist because worship doesn't. Sabi ni John Piper. We want everyone, every people around the world to become worshippers of God. For them to be worshippers of God, the Almighty. That is the vision. We do witnessing, we do missions because we want people to worship the Lord God Almighty. To be in heaven forever with God. That is the vision because God deserves glory. God deserves to be worshipped by His creation forevermore. May missions Kasi hindi pa nag-worship lahat ng tao. Importante yung verse na yon. Secondly, because of the urgency of time, we witness because time is of the essence. First of all, tignan natin, individual time. This is a parable, Luke 16, 22. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. All of us will die. We don't know kailan. Sometimes talk about death, no? It gives you goosebumps, di ba? No? Lord, ayoko pa. <laughs> Kaka-60 ko pa lang, parang gano'n, no? Lord, ayoko pa. Kaka-50 ko pa lang. <laughs> By the way, 50 na ako nung February. Praise God. I thank the Lord for that. Amen. <laughs> we will die. Individual, young people sometimes, they get sick. For older people like us, we understand the time because of our bodies getting tired, getting sick. Diba? The young man, the man, the beggar died, rich, the rich man died. Time is of the essence. Your loved ones might go home soon or might die soon. Do they know Jesus? Eh, kasama mo yung nanay mo lagi. Ikaw lang ang Christian. Paano siya? Ikaw, sabi ko sa'yo, oh, hallelujah, pumunta ako sa langit. Paano yung nanay mo? Paano tatay mo? Paano yung mga anak mo? Paano yung mga kapatid mo? ba? Tignan natin susunod na time. This is about Jesus coming. Look, Mark 13, 32. About that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven the Son, but only the Father. This is about Jesus' promise of coming back. We understand the rapture because we are Pentecostal church. Hallelujah. Jesus coming back soon. 
Ang sabi, in the twinkling of an eye. Actually, hindi ko nga, ano to, medyo challenging to sa akin, no? Pati yung, pati si Jesus, only the Father knows when the time is. Boom! Pwede mamaya. The urgency of the time. Hindi natin pwede maging passive about sharing the truth to your loved ones and to your friends. Number three. Next. The truth that there is a way for people to be saved. Sabi kasi ng mga tao lang, pare-pareho naman reliyon eh. Di ba? Okay lang yan. Pare-pareho naman yan. Baka iba sa iyo, naniniwala pa. Meron bang naniniwala pa rin ganun? Dito? Hindi ko kayo patataas sinakamay, of course. <laughs> Pero let me talk to you honestly. Do you still believe that? Pare-pareho naman pananampal tayo, ano? God is good. There are many ways to heaven. No! There are not many ways of God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Either Jesus is saying the truth or Jesus is a liar. You choose. Let's look at some of the verses. Ephesians 1.7 In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the only one who saves. Amen. Salamat sa Panginoon. Nakilala mo si Kristo. Amen. Nagpapasalamat ka. Are you grateful that you have known Jesus? Are you grateful that you have known that He died on the cross for our sins? Is it something effectual sa personal life mo? Hindi lang kasi nandito ka sa UBC. It's something personal. Then I want to talk to you today. Some of you older people, some of you young people over there, some of you young people over here. Is it personal? Would you say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross, not only for the sins of people, but for my sins? Sabi ng Bible, as many as ones who receive Him, who believe in His name, He, become, he becomes a child of God, he becomes children of God. That's the promise. Ito ang sabi, no? We, in Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Thank God for the riches of His grace. Mancho 20, 20 verse 28, For just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. He came to serve. In particular, to give His life for us. We remember once again Holy Week. <laughs> Ulit-ulit tayo, pero talaga yun yung reality nun. Sana hindi lang tradisyon. Sana hindi lang nakagawian. But we are reminded, thank you Jesus. Thank you for being a ransom for our sins. Thank you for making us your child. No? Sabi dito, He came to give His life as a ransom for many. Amen. Amen. Would you pause and say amen? Amen. Thank you Jesus. Fourthly, the clear command of Jesus, another reason for witnessing. Command, no? The clear command. Matthew 28, we know this, 19 to 20, this is not just about witnessing, but discipling people, no? Let me read that. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely... I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Witnessing, then discipling. Jesus wants people to be discipled, to become His followers who are obedient to His commandments. Sabi ni Jesus, you are my friends if you obey my commands. You are my friends. Nung Friday, I spoke to the young people in our youth fusion, youth service. Uh, we thank God because God is slowly building you know, new young people coming from backgrounds na hindi kristyano, hindi ito lumaki sa church. New young people. I told them about being friends with Jesus. Ang sabi ko from John 15 verse 15, Jesus wants to be friends with you. Sabi niya, you are my friends if you do what I command. No? So, nice na pangin to be friends with us and to tell people about that. To tell people about becoming disciples and He promised to be with us. Mark 16, 15, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. All the world! Sa Pilipinas, napakaraming churches. 
Ang sabi nila, there are about 80,000 evangelical Christian church in the Philippines. Wow! Pero, konting kwento natin, ano? Yung, alam mo tayo, 120 million? Siguro? Roughly 120 million? Ilang porsyento ang Bible-believing born-again Christian? 8? 10%? And we're not talking about the Assemblies of God lang or Pentecostal churches. This is about the body of Christ in the Philippines. The whole body of Christ. Kasama yung mga Baptist, Methodista, Independents, etc. Basta Bible-believing. Something has got to happen in the Philippines. Dapat may mangyari. Dapat din meron tayong pangarap at panalangin. Lord, ano yun? Pastor James, yung four chair, di ba? There's always the empty chair. There's an empty pew in UBC. There are empty pews. Is the command clear? Is the command clear? Go and make disciples. Next, number five, for the reasons I like this. The compelling love of Christ. The love of Jesus. Second Corinthians 5.14 For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Paul speaking, he's convinced. It's Christ's love who compels No, although nasak siya nung una, kasi nagpakita si Jesus sa Axe, di ba? Sa Axe, pakita sa kanya, ano, vision. What an event! Nagpakita. Gusto niyo ba yun? Magliwanag, bigla. One time nagdadrive ka, biglang may liwanag. <laughs> Gusto niyo yun? Parang kay Paul? Sana, no? Pero hindi eh. Sometimes the witness of the living Savior is silent witness of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Right? Amen. Meron ba din yung tumanggap kay Kristo na walang fanfare? He just one day decided to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know that you love me. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Rule. Be Lord. Minsan ganun eh, di ba? Amen? Wala namang, kailangan po, shh, make it that. Pag tumagal, hallelujah, Lord, I receive you, shh, make it that. Kumukulog ang langit. Wala namang ganun eh. Pero minsan, nagda-doubt ka kasi dahil tahimik na tahimik, may nangyari ba? <laughs> Pero meron. Hallelujah! Amen! Meron! Are you convinced that you are born again? Parang dito lang sa gitna. <laughs> Ulit, are you convinced that you are a child of God? Kahit walang fanfare. Because of the love of God. Because of the promise of God. Sabi ni, Paul was convinced. Although si Paul, dramatic. But later on, as he studies and as the revelation of the Holy Spirit, he is convinced that Christ's love compels him to tell Gentiles about this Jesus. Salamat sa Diyos, masunurin si Paul. Kasi wala tayo rito kung di siya nag-speak sa Gentiles, by the way. Christ's love compels us. It is the love of Christ. Lagi proverbial, John 3.16. Do you, do we experience the love of God in our hearts? Do we experience His love every day? No matter how old you are right now, some of the men, some of the of the, the women here, senior citizens, do you still say, I thank God for His love? The love of God compels me, sabi ni Paul. Ano yung word na compel? Medyo, ano yun? Mal- malakas yun, strong yun. Compels, motivates, Moves me on. Propels. The love of God. Now, let me ask you this. Five reasons. Ito ang tanong ko ngayong umaga. Do we really? Sige po, next page. Do we really believe these truths? Diyan kasi nagkakatalo eh. Do we really believe these truths? that these are sufficient, more than sufficient reason for us to share the gospel. Which of these truths motivate us, motivate you to share Jesus to others? Is it the love of God? 
Minsan, pag yung clear command, malino naman sa atin, eh, no? Pero parang, ako ba yun? <laughs> Nagdududa pa tayo. For I hope, it's the love of God. Sabi ni, ni Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Just last month, I talked about when everything fails, stay in God's love. Meron kaming love month series started by Pastor Sur and then ako yung dulo. When everything else fails, stay in God's love. Would the love of God be sufficient reason for you to tell others about that same love that saves, transforms, and heals? I pray so. Let's go to number one. Number two, some of the examples. Models. Models are examples. Examples of witnessing for us to call. How do we witness? The New Testament has several models and examples. I call them models. Ako ang gumawa ng mga nakalagay. No? It may not be uh, from the books. No? But I call these models, examples. The question is how? The Bible provides sufficient examples. Number one, the Andrew model. The bringer. Andrew is the bringer. John 1, 41. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah that is the Christ. Andrew was only a bringer. He's an apostle, yes. Pero masikat si Peter sa kanya. Pero the greatest thing, I think, I think, this personal, that he did was to tell his brother Simon, Hey, bro, we found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. And the rest is history. The bringer. Are you a bringer? Maaaring hindi ka magaling magsalita, hindi tayo magaling mag-share, hindi tayo, sasabi natin, hindi ako mag, ano eh, introvert ako eh, shy ako eh. Pero you're good with people, you're friendly, so you can bring people to events, you can bring people to watch a Christian movie, you can bring people to a gospel presentation. As a bringer of people, who would you bring first to Jesus? I'm throwing out the question right now to you. Now, this year, 2024, kalimutan natin yung last year. Forget your regrets. Sabi nung kanta, di ba, Ate Eliza? Forget your regrets. Leave it to the Lord. 2024, who would you bring first to Jesus? I challenge you. Next, next Friday, next Sunday, I hope that these pews will be filled up with people. Who would you bring to Jesus? Next, second model. Jesus shepherding model. Guiding people with compassion. Kanina ko sa si Brother Ricky, di, naalala, niya, naalala niya yung word na incarnational. Pinaalala niya kanina. I like that. The incarnational model ni Jesus. Let's de- read this verse. Matthew 9.36 When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Look at those words. Jesus saw them with compassion. The multitudes. Because they were harassed by circumstances, by life, by situation, by poverty, by Roman oppression at that time. Sa atin, by sickness, injustice. No? They were helpless. They cannot get out of their problem, of their sin, of their addiction. Of their poverty. Kanina rin, pinag-usapan namin poverty. Bakit ang poverty parang umuulit, pinamamana, nanganganak, pero hindi naman dapat kang pinanganak ang mahirap, hindi ka naman dapat pumatay mahirap. Bakit ang hirap umalis na mga tao? Maanang hindi poverty, pero poverty from within. Loneliness, depression, no? addictions. Jesus saw them all and He had compassion on them. So let me ask you this. In what ways can you think of? What ways can you apply the compassion of Jesus in guiding, shepherding people who are helpless and harassed in your area of influence? Ang tawag, dito, ang tawag ng mga nagtuturo dito, incarnational model. Jesus was one with the people. Pag may leper, sabi ng law, wag touch. Si Jesus, tinatch yung leper. Hindi lang tinatch, pinagaling pa. Nagtuturo, spiritual, naguto mo yung 5,000, anong ginawa? <laughs> pinakain. Naguto mo yung 4,000, pinakain uli. 
Isa sa paborito kong story ng healing ay yung The Woman of Nain. Sabi, pababa si Jesus sa Jericho, may nanay. Nabasa niyo na yan? May maliit na story sa gospel. Pag, pag binabasa niyo, masaya yun. Minsan, hindi natin na-discover. No? Lumabas. Kasi namatay yung kaisa-isang anak. And the woman was crying. Anong sabi ng Bible? May sinabi ba, may sinabi ba yung nanay? May sinabi ba si Jesus? Wala. Anong ginawa niya? Tinatch niya yung, ano, yung coffin. At binuhay niya yung bata. He met the need of the woman. Hindi kailangan magsalita. Hindi kailangan yung faith ni Jairus. Si Jairus sabi niya, huwag ka na pumunta, Lord. Just say the word. Ganon din yung centurion. Just say the word. Punong-puno ng faith. Yung babae, iyak lang ng iyak. Pero minit ni Jesus yung needs ng babae. Compassion. Would you be willing to get out of your comfort zone to meet the needs of people thus witnessing about Jesus' compassion to them? I'm not saying you change the world. No. But will you be willing to get out of your comfort zone where you are to meet the needs of the people around you by the compassion of Christ? The model of compassion. In messages, we do not want to it's not our goal to make you feel guilty or anything like that. No. We are presenting the gospel. We want the Holy Spirit to speak to us today. We're not saying, I change the world. Parang Miss Universe, no? I want to change the world. Hindi ganun. Just the influence, the area that we're in. Probably loved ones, neighbors, schoolmates, workmates. I pray that we'll be filled with the compassion of Jesus. Number three model, the house church model. Our home as venue to experience Jesus. Let me read. This is in Acts 2. Acts 2, 46-47. They broke bread at their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily. Anong pinag natin dito? In the New Testament, people, they're Jews, they go to the temple. Pero ang maganda, they meet every day in their homes. Organic Christianity. Probably after work, they would open their homes to their friends, workmates. Homes as venues where people will experience the love of God. They talk about Jesus. Wala pang Bible no, na wala pang Bible. Acts chapter two palang to eh. Yung yung first gospel Mark was written about AD fifty, about thirty years later. They're just telling what they have heard, oral, to their workmates. Probably same skill: carpenter, carpenter, fisherman, fisherman, tradesman, tradesman. Tun sa bahay nila. And sabi and the Lord added to their number daily. Let me ask you this. Let's ask this question today. Sige po, next page. Are you willing to open your home to be a neutral place for friends and relatives to experience Jesus? Not only Bible study, but a place to pray for their needs. A place for, for worship together. A place where you can talk about life as life is, and then tell them the hope about Jesus. In the Assemblies of God, there's what we call Operation Home Base. But you know, this example is age old, 2,000 years. The home as a place for people to experience Jesus. Now, let me throw that question. First of all, siyempre dun sa mga nanay at tatay, may bahay. Hindi mahalaga ang laki o liit ng bahay mo. Are you willing to open your homes to your relatives and friends and neighbors so that you can converse? I'm using the word dialogue, conversations, not debate. A place where you eat merienda and talk about Jesus. Are you willing? The model of the home, not in church. Sometimes we natatakot sila dito eh. Of course, we bring them to church. Di ba hindi mo mas maganda kung dadalhin mo muna sila sa bahay mo tapos doon kayo mag-usap? For centuries, this has been very effective kind of witnessing. 
bringing people for our homes, to our homes. Lunch, merienda, dinner time, over coffee. Yung kumpare mo. Kumare, kamag-anak. This is for all of us, no? Hindi kailangan ng pastor. Just you and your loved one. Just you and your friends in the comfort of your home. Next, number four. The nameless disciples model. I just coined that name. <laughs> nameless disciples model. You know why? Because they were nameless. This is the start of the Antioch church. The great Antioch church, the sending church of Paul. It started this way. Let's read this. Acts 11, 19-20. Now, those who have been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word only to among Jews. Pwede na, Jews lang sana. No? Look at this. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, pause. Thank God for the men. Amen. Hallelujah for the men. Hallelujah for men's ministry. Are there men in the house? Ulit. Are there men in the house? You know what? Look at, look at that. Look at that. Some of the men from Cyprus and Cyrene, they're not even from Jerusalem. They're not even from Judea or Samaria. They're from far away. What they did, look, they began to speak to Greeks also. What did they do? Telling them about the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the men. Only the women are saying amen. Thank God for the men. Hallelujah. Praise God. The men, what did they do? What did they do? They just tell them about Jesus. Who? Not just the Jews. Mas safe yun eh. Pwede yun. Jews. Pero sabi ni, ng writer, ni Luke, even to the Greeks. You know what? This started the church, the great church of Antioch. Do they have names? Look. Look at the Bible. Do they have names? They were nameless. They were not even Peter and John and Paul or Barnabas or ano ba bang name? <laughs> Maisip natin. Wala. Nameless. Kaya nilagay ko the nameless model. You don't even need to be a pastor to tell others about Jesus. You don't need to be a leader to tell others about Jesus. You may not be sikat in UBC. And just you want, what do you do? You just tell people about the love of God and about Jesus Christ. Amen? Next. Dalawa na lang. So, let me question. First, question ko muna. May tanong ako. Have you ever tried sharing about Jesus to the non-religious from the People's Republic of China here in the Philippines? Talking about your context. Filipino Chinese Church. Have you met Chinese who are non-religious? Atheists who are in the Philippines? And dami, 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 dami sa Pilipinas. Dami-dami sa Metro Manila. To the point na, sorry for the word, they're not very good in, as, as a citizen. Pinabastos nila yung mga condom, condominiums natin. Sinisira. They think that they're above the law. You know why? Because they don't know God. Have you ever tried? How about people from other cultures that you meet in your business? If you're a businessman. At work. As a professional, as you travel the campus or community, let me tell a story, a brief story. Nung nakarang araw lang, nagbibigay ng leaflets and invitations sa student center yung aming youth pastor and his wife. There, this is young man. Na-invite siya, tapos punta siya. Pero sabi niya, hindi ako religious eh. But I'm interested, I'm open. Actually, may higpit nga yun. May pagka-Filipino-Chinese nga yata. Yung, yung tatay niya. Kasi sabi ng tatay ko, do not depend on people. Work hard. Do not depend on people. Nagatin sa one Sunday, 
Ang sabi niya dun sa breakout session is very honest. Sabi niya, uh, sabi kasi ng sermon ni Pastor Sur, rely on God. Ang, ang response ng batang lalaki, ng kabataang lalaki, hindi mo na magets po yan kasi sabi ng tatay ko, do not depend on anybody else. So from then on, our youth pastor explained to him the word of God. Ang balita nitong nakaraang araw, in one of the times sa student center, he accepted the Lord. Uh, there's this other young man who attended, sabi niya, uh, college student na ako, hindi rin ako religious. Uh, Katolik kami, pero hindi mo ako nagsisimba. For I'm open. I'm open. People are open. If you just simply talk about the Lord to them, you don't need to be a pastor. So are you willing to do this, to talk to people about your Lord, about your Savior? Number five, the prayer evangelism model. To pray for people, for their needs. Prayer as evangelism. Here, we have signs and wonders. Verse 6 of chapter 5. The, the man at the gate. Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do I have, what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and stood in the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them in the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. <laughs> May song pa nga tayo niyan eh. Do you still believe that? That when you pray, People get healed. Amen. Prayer evangelism. Maring hindi direct prayer. You pray. Lord, we pray for uh, Aling Maria. Hindi pa nga sister kasi hindi pa Christian. Lord, we pray for Mrs. Maria. May sick, sickness siya, Lord. May cancer siya. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want that this moment of cancer help to introduce you to her, Father. Do you pray for the sick? Do you pray for the depressed in your prayer meeting? Do you still pray for people who are having marital problems? Praying for people brings them, the Holy Spirit works and brings them closer and closer to Jesus. In this case, direct. <laughs> I pray miracles would happen in UBC. Amen? Amen. We pray. Be open. Hindi naman ang nagmimilagro tayo. Wala naman tayong kinalaman dyan eh. Di po ba? Ang Diyos ang nagmimiracle. Amen? But do you trust God to bring out the miracle? Let me let me read about Paul. Paul in Malta. Maraming miracle si Paul. Pero ito yung pinili ko kasi kita-kita nyo. There was an estate nearby, Acts 28, that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. When this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways. This is Paul in Malta, papunta sa Rome, na shipwreck. He still ministered to the sick. I'm sure yung they honored us, opportunity to share about Jesus for the islanders of Malta. Opportunities for pray for people in need. Merong nag-share sa'yo, co-worker. Alam mo, wala na talagang pag yung marriage namin. Alam mo, hindi ko masusolusyonan yan. Pero alam ko, may pag-asa sa Diyos. Can we pray? Hindi ko alam kung ano nangyayari sa akin. Ang dami kong depression, etc., etc. Nag-share yung classmate mo. Alam mo, hindi ko matugunan yung depression kasi di naman ako counselor. But one thing I know, sabi ng Bible, Jesus is a wonderful counselor. Can I pray for you? Let's pray. You know what you do with prayer evangelism? You ask God, the Father Almighty, to touch that life without even sharing Jesus yet to that person. Ano sa palagay niyo ang desire ng Diyos? Does God want to heal the sick and to help the, this person na pinagpray mo? Palagay mo, gusto ng Diyos yun? Nasagutin yung panalangin mo? Yes? Yes. What if God answers that prayer? He would say, alam mo, pinag-pray ako ni Eliza. Sinagot ng Diyos ang panalangin ko. Sambo lang, kapatid. Pinag-pray, sinagot ng Diyos ang panalangin ko. Galing. Sumasagot pala ang Diyos. Realization. Prayer 
evangelism. Prayer of the unsaved person through you. Wonderful when God answers it. Lastly, the Philip model, the evangelist. Medyo, medyo detali ng konti itong evangelist kasi gusto ko, I, I challenge you, some of you to rise up as an evangelist. Acts 21, Living the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. Philip was one of the seven deacons in Acts chapter 6, chosen to serve the needs of the widows in the Jerusalem church. By the way, he's not a pastor. He's a deacon, chosen as one of the seven. But the Bible said, Philip was also as a gifted was also a gifted evangelist. Let's look at some of the actions. Those who had been scattered, Acts chapter eight, preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they paid close attention to what he said. With many shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Philip the evangelist shared the word of God, healed the sick, did miracles before the Lord. He's not a pastor. He's a deacon. Yet he was so empowered to witness, empowered to share the word of God. Secondly, Philip shared the Ethiopian eunuch, Acts 8. Now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, let me read that, no? The angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south of the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Next page. He started out and on his way he met the Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopian. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way he was sitting in his chariot and reading the book of Isaiah. The rest is history. Philip shared to the eunuch. Philip was an evangelist. You know, hindi naman tayo lahat Tinawag para tayo ay mag... Sige, next page po. All of us are called to be witnesses, but some are gifted by the Holy Spirit to be evangelists. Let the evangelists in UBC arise. I pray. Baka meron dyan tinawag, di kailangan maging pastor. Pero ang gifting mo ay evangelism. You are glad when you share Jesus. You are glad and happy when you share to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Sige, next page. Sige po. The gifts of the church, Ephesians 4.11, so Christ gave himself the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Lagi nating nakakalimutan, we remember the prophet, we remember the pastor and the teacher. We forget the evangelist. The evangelist is also part of the five-fold ministry. You're praying for a pastor. Hallelujah! Pray. Continue to pray. But also pray for the evangelist in your midst to rise up. The other time, I was sharing to the young people in our church. Ang share ko nga ay friends of Jesus. Hindi pwedeng hindi mag-end. Jesus wants you to be a friend. Jesus wants you to submit your life to Jesus. Every time I speak publicly, ewan ko, sabi ng asawa ko, mas, ma, mas, ma, mas, ma, mas maayos daw ako mag-preach sa non-believer kaysa sa church. <laughs> Pag ang audience ko daw ay non-believers, mas okay daw kaysa pag nagpipreach ako sa church, sa mga believers like you. Sabi ng aking asawa. I don't know. There's a joy when you speak to people na hindi, hindi mananampalataya. Puro Christian na kayo. Ang dami nyo, no? We are, we are talking about the message of the Lord. Pero one time, it's so exciting to speak to, speak to people who are not believers to tell them about Jesus. No? Next page, please. Sige po. Uh, let me quote this. The, in the New Testament, evangelists were men of God who were gifted and commissioned by God to proclaim the gospel of salvation to the unsaved and to help establish a new work in a city. When proclaimed, the gospel always carries with it the offer of power of salvation. Next page. The evangelist is essential to God's purpose for the church. The church that fails to support the ministry of the evangelist will cease to gain converts as God desires. Let me read the last stanza. It will become a static church devoid of growth and missionary service from, from the full life study Bible. Ayo natin nun. Gusto natin mag yung mga gifts ng Lord. Unang-una, lahat tayo witnesses. Sige po, next page. I'm ending. Models and examples are written for us when we can learn from them 
the house of witnessing. Different methods, different situations, all with the aim of telling people about Jesus. You don't need to be an evangelist. You can be a witness. But I pray evangelists would rise from UBC. Next page, please. The New Testament provides motivations and models so that we will be all effective witnesses. Sana sufficient yung nabasa nyo. You can still read from the Word of God. What are the reasons? No, reflect on it. What the, who are the models that we can see? No? These are provided. So all of us will not be passive, will not be seaters, but will be active. Next page. So what do we do about it? Here's for all of you, for all of us. Number one, examine our own motives, why we do or do not witness. Examine it. Do a reflection this Holy Week. Lord, why am, why am I afraid of telling people about you? Why am I ashamed? Alam mo, mahirap sa mga Kristiyanong katulad ko. Pag hindi ako nag-intentional to talk to people sa labas, wala na kasi akong non-Christian friends, halos. Mga old-time friend ko, Christian. Mga new friends ko, Christian. Kasama ko sa simbahan, Christian. Pamilya ko, Christian. Family friends ko, Christian. Barkada. Kaibigan ko si Pastor Jace, pastor. Puro pastor, di ba? Puro Christian. We need to be intentional about going out meeting other people, talking to them. There's this one pastor, he's already in heaven. Associate pastor namin dati. Nagka-cancer siya. Nung nagka-cancer siya, kasi malapit na rin siya mamatayin, alam niya. Ang maganda sa kanya, doon sa cancer ward, lahat ng tao nasabihan niya patungkol kay Jesus. Kasi alam niya, pupunta siya sa langit pag namatay siya. Eh yung mga kasama niya, Doon sa Pasig Medical Center, yung Rizal Memorial Medical Center. In that, in those few months, people heard the gospel because he was there with them. What do you do in your area of influence? Dino muntay lati na tawagat mag missionary. Where what do you do in your area of influence? Number two, ask God for forgiveness for being passive in witnessing. Amen. Aminin natin. Sorry, Lord. Amen. Di ba? We want to ask God, Lord, sorry, Lord, Father, forgive us. We sing the songs, we hear the sermons, but do we remain passive? Number three, saturate your mind with the scriptures on why and how to be witnesses. Read the scriptures. Don't take my word for it. Read the scriptures. Discover it. The gospel, the book of Acts. Reflect on it. Write down your reflections. What do you see? Mas maganda nga kasi you can see the details on how they did. For example, yung nameless Nung una kong binasa, galing mo ito ha. Walang pangalan. Hindi kilala. Pero they started the church in Antioch. Number four. Start by practicing a method of witnessing that you are comfortable with and do it regularly. Start small. <laughs> Di ba? Pwede naman. Sino sa inyo nakakaalam ng four spiritual laws? Oh, sample yun. Sino sa inyo nakakaalam ng real meaning and purpose of life? Uh, I'll give you this because Kuya Johnson is also this here. AP Media. Yan, hashtag, yan si Jesus. Tama, Kuya Johnson? You can download it in your cell phone, talk to your neighbor about it, your friend, your kumbare. Nasa cell phone. Video, full color. Hashtag, yan si Jesus. That's a method. Ngayon, may ginagawang AP Media Reels, Apologetics, one minute or so, videos talking about uh, contending for the gospel, talking about apologetics. For example, uh, si Jesus ba ay tao o Diyos? One minute lang. Parang TikTok, pero apologetics. Our institutions are doing things for us, like AP Media, like ICI, like our denominations, so that we have tools to share the good news. Tagalog, Ingles, Bisaya, meron. Tracks, meron pa rin. Movies. Choose a method. Practice it. Share it regularly. Next, pray for God's love and compassion for the lost. Ito, ito kailangan natin ito. Ito ang energy. <laughs> Pag hindi ka nag-pray, wala. Wala talaga. Walang compassion. After nitong sermon na to, I don't know, makakalimutan ninyo. Pray if you pray, Lord, wala akong love eh. 
pwede pong honest, Lord, wala akong love. Or kulang yung love ko. The love tank. Fill me. Without your infilling, I have nothing. Without your love for the lost, sa akin, nothing. Lastly, regularly pray for the unsaved people individually and as a church. Let me ask you, in your prayer meetings, do you, do you pray include unsaved people in your prayer meetings? May kapit-bahay kami sa tapat ng bahay namin. Wala na ngayon. Umalis na. Abandonadong bahay. May nakatira doon na mag-anak. Isang batang lalaki ang anak nila. Mga five years old. Di nag-aaral. Nambabasura lang sila kasi parang squatter sila doon. Through the many months na nandun kami, I was helping them with food whenever we can. Minsan nga pati pera kasi wala daw pang gata. So, bibigay ako. Pero isa sa pinakamalaking palagay ko nagawa namin is to, to bring the little boy to the Sunday school. Kahit gusgusin sa tinatry naman ng nanay, pero nadala namin for several weeks. I was praying for that boy. Suddenly, kinawa sila ng police, tinala na sa probinsya. That morning, I really asked the Lord, hanggang dun lang yung tulong namin. Hanggang dun lang yung presentation ng gospel. At yung mga love acts. For I pray in your safekeeping for that boy wherever he is. Sa probinsya. San mo man sa dalin, Panginoon. Ikaw lang ang pwedeng tumulong sa kanya. At pwedeng magdala sa iyong paanan sa batang ito. Wala na kami. Kahit sa probinsya. <laughs> Usher him to a church. Bring him to a DVBS. That day, Nalungkot ako kasi wala na yung bata. Wala kami magagawa. Pero ang Diyos may magagawa. Do you still pray for the lost? Last verse. Of course, this is what we believe. We ask the Holy Spirit for power. We know that. 2 Timothy 1.7 God has given us a spirit of timidity but the power, love, and self-discipline. Acts 1.8 You will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Dr. Frank Macchia said in one of his seminars that power is not only for signs and wonders, but it's about the power of love in our hearts. Power can be equated to the love of God. Most of the time, yun ang kailangan natin, the love of God for other people. How are you today? Do you want that God's love for your heart, in your heart? Do you want that? For God to fill you. Let's be honest before the Lord as we close this sermon. Many methods, many means in the scriptures, you can study it. I hope the reasons will compel us, especially the love of Jesus. But what will you do, especially this Holy Week and after Holy Week?